Hey, folks, and welcome to Roundtable Review, where I force my friends. <laughs> to... <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> what is this voice? Give it to me. Give it to me. I want to hear the passionate Arlie. Let's do it. Okay, one second. I'm here for this. Hey, folks, and welcome to Roundtable Review. <laughs> Hey folks, and welcome to Roundtable Review, where I force my friends and convince colleagues into co-op indies, and then disagree about them vehemently. And today, I'm joined by three such fine folks. Three unlucky suckers. Hi, my name is Moriarty, and my YouTube is really cool. There you go. Uh, I'm Hop. I'm Arlie's editor, I guess. I have to deal with this now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I'm Halzerath and I do reviews and guides on YouTube at Halzerath. We're here to talk about Shiro Games Darksburg, uh, which has sort of undergone a few changes uh, in its current iteration. It is sort of like a God, it's sort of like a weird, almost MOBA-ish gameplay mixed with a roguelite. Now it's almost like Diablo. I, yeah, I would. I, I would, mean, uh, not really, because it doesn't have like the the loot drop thingy of Diablo. It's like sort of hack and slashy, but not quite. I would describe it um, with kind of a mix of similar words. Uh, it is a roguelike MOBA. Um, it is co-op, and you are playing in a Left for Dead inspired Diablo. Um, it's a four-player PVE versus swarm kind of thing. Um, it's got a lot of that kind of inspiration in there. Yeah, it has like a campaign mode and a survival mode I'm not really going to talk about because it's just a bunch of dudes stuck in arena shit swarms at you. And it's... Eh. <laughs> <laughs> eh. That's all I have to say about survival review. mode. <laughs> Look, I I'm mostly <laughs> here to talk about the primary campaign mode because that's what I forced you guys through for... A number of reasons. Force is a very good word because you just kind of threw us in and then you just went and left us all to our own <laughs> devices. <laughs> hey, you 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 grew as a person from the experience and didn't even die that much. Oh, I died a lot. Same. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, I there was a victories to be had, even if it was built on your bodies. I had fun with the characters I played, though. The gameplay was actually fun. It's just... It feels, I guess if, if I were to describe the gameplay, um, though I know that uh, you wanted to kind of start with story, um, but... Spoilers, we can dive into are, it. Actually, here, there you are know, no story. let's like, quickly get the story out of the way, because there's so very little to talk about. Yeah, there's um, no story. You, yeah, it's basically, there's a concept, which you can mostly get from the Steam page or from playing the game, that the town of Darksburg has been overrun by undead. And it turns out, at the end, that it's all been caused, I think maybe, by the reanimated corpse of Baron Von Darksburg, and maybe by the Doctor character, because there's like a throwaway dialogue line in the encounter where it's sort of implied it might be her fault, but they never really clarify on it, and it's not like there's an actual ending or even an intro sequence to really clarify that the most you get narratively at least what i took away from is there's like little flavor tidbits on some of the relics you unlock that talk a little bit about the town but most of those seem to be sort of gaggy or throwaway it's certainly not going to come up and bite you that's the thing uh -huh. there's no there's no story that you're gonna have to understand but i think it goes a little bit further than have to understand to the point that there's not enough story that you can understand these things not really in a way to properly get invested in its world or anything. Exactly. Yeah. It, it felt like gameplay looking for a story rather than story looking for gameplay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually went out of my way to unlock as many of the relics as possible to see if it would provide me. No. No, no, no. So yeah, I think that gets story out of the way. So let's just move on to gameplay now because you were starting up there with... It, um... I think with regards to gameplay, right, the easiest way to explain it is to compare it to other games that it's very similar to. And I would say that it it plays like a harder Path of Exile or, or tor uh, Torchlight, though arguably almost all of the difficulty in the game comes from a combination of the lack of healing, the roguelike permadeath mode, 
and then uh, just the absolute swarms of enemies that you're you're fighting. It is a, a non-stop kind of wave of uh, of enemy units, and so it's not really that like anything you're doing is particularly difficult. It's just death by a thousand cuts. I mean, there, there is certainly things that can kill you abruptly and sharply. There's, um, as per Left for Dead things, there's, like, the elite units that'll come across, which will just end your fucking day. And, like, there's, there's definitely, like, a sort of strategy to being able to identify which one they are and dealing with them before they put at you end. But, like, you're certainly correct. There's just constant swarms of things. And as per Left for Dead, there's the, if you dick around too much, the game decides you've been dicking around too much and just sends a fucking like teeming mass of just minions at you to put you in the ground and there's actually you know the like the chase sequences too where if you progress further into a level they'll actually just cue like an unending wave of enemies until you reach like the exit or a, a point Unfortunately, because of the way that the game plays, where you're you're playing very defensively, looking for you know health and things like that, uh, having these swarms of enemies come after you and never stop, and worse, not telling you that they're never going to stop, uh, it didn't feel good. That wasn't a good feeling. No, that was very annoying. I, I think the the awkward part about that was when because it's. What happened, I think, that was the worst experience was one of us opened a door, and a gate, and it queued the endless swarm mode, but the rest of us had been holding a defensive position because we have to scavenge level to get the gold we need to, like, buy shit and, like, the, the relics and the little, uh, what the fuck are they called? Like, the ingots you need to buy permanent meta progression and... So we're just sitting there trying to explore and deal with the normal issues, not realizing that, like, the gates of hell have fucking shat up onto the streets and are coming for our asses. Communication is definitely essential in it, and it's a... kind of hit or miss. Yeah, and it gets harder, like, the further you go in, because, like, the difficulty modes are interesting. It starts out sort of basic of... The first difficulty gives you access to, like, some more interesting modifiers to the game, because you start finding, like these bonuses as you kill a certain amount of enemies that add more layers to the way you can actually upgrade a character in a given run and some of them have like neat downsides you need to balance out so you're trying to figure out like if you want to take a bit more damage but but deal more or have your health reduced but anytime you would get permanent uh sorry temporary health it doesn't go down anymore just things like that but then you have modifiers later on, like the permadeath that, that Mori mentioned is like a really late game modifier and it's just cripplingly hard. Like normally you have a certain amount of downs and every time you're downed, your max health drops substantially. And an insult to injury right there. Yeah, no, it's bad. You get downed and then if your friend ups you, you might be like within threshold of just being one shot by like a base experiment, especially later on because all range units get their damage doubled. This kind of falls into what happens with a lot of these games where it's very gear dependent and it's very perk dependent. The lower levels, they, they kind of suck, right? Like it provides a really negative first impression. It does get better. As but you, you have play. to stick with it. <laughs> you do have to stick with it. And I can understand why people wouldn't stick with it. I would not be surprised if the, the refund rate on this is very, very high. Because I know that if I hadn't paid for it and had to come on here and hang out with Arnley, I wouldn't have stuck with it. And if I'd gotten it on Game Pass or something like that, I would have uninstalled this. I... The early impression is very negative. And it's, I think, made a little bit worse because the servers are very empty for this game. So being, like, co-op is a huge part about doing this. You can play with AI, yes, but it's more tedious. Like, as much as it's like a comedy of errors playing with human players, because the AI can be pretty damn competent, a lot of the fun was in just doing the stupid shit we were doing together as players. And yeah, no, the servers are just sort of empty. It's... It's a game you need to bring your friends to rather than find friends in. Sure. Yes. And, and like once I actually got you guys in and we like ran a run to get you guys started and getting perks leveled and having ingots to buy relics and be able to actually start a build, it became more interesting. Especially since 
all the characters, I think, are actually pretty well done. Like, I enjoy, like, the characters and how they just feel. They all sort of bring something unique to the group. They all have crowd control mechanisms that work relatively interestingly, like, um, Varog, Discount Warwick. <laughs> um, he's very neat for being able to hold a defensive position for a long while and giving other people, like, a spot to mobilize around and catch their breath. Um, the chef's great for sustaining everyone and slowing down people. The doctor is good for pushing people back and clearing a path and slowing down people. There is a lot of slowing down and, and like creating little defensive protective zones built into the kits of these characters. The game kind of fits into the realm of if this game had a community and if some of the really, really early and really, really late design choices were tightened up more, it would actually be a decent game, but it's getting to that mid game and then not being dragged into the late game before you're ready for it. Which, I mean, it takes a little while to even get prepared for that. So there's like a grinding element to it. And like on one hand, there's the daily missions, which I thought was neat. Just, you know, things you can do that will just sort of automatically kick in when you do a run or two that'll help you progress. But there's definitely grind built into it. And that's not necessarily the best feeling when like the average runs could take well and like a bunch like the character building itself for your stat sheet is fixed but there's a lot of randomization in like the relics the other part of building your character and that was a little bit annoying to spend time building up a form of meta currency and then gambling with it yeah a lot of the the negative uh impressions that I have towards this are are not towards the core gameplay loop, which I think is perfectly fine. Um, it's not even towards any characters or anything like that, right? Like, we played a couple of different characters you and, like and tried <laughs> different things. It's all fine. It's just that there are so many tiny little problems where you go, oh, this really could have been done better, or this could have been polished a little bit more, and it's not. Um... I can certainly see that if I'd purchased this and didn't have friends to play, I, I, I would not like this game at all. Because when we jumped in, I think there were two games, and each one had one person or two people in it. And if that's what you're, you're coming to, as a new player, boy. Oh, and those games rough. were passworded. We couldn't even right. get into the sessions. So that's just that's a real rough introduction, uh, followed by the kind of things where. Again, polish would have helped. I had no idea what any of the characters did and didn't really explain what they did. And you just kind of have to go into it with this flavor text that's not particularly elucidating. So like, I am I am hoping that if uh, you're the developer, you would, you would go through this and just kind of make it more new player friendly to your title, right? And then it's just the little, little bits of polish, little bits of foundational polish too, things that make it just that extra step better like i think honestly for me where the game really picked up was recently for the first difficulty mode of the game they added those runes of power because normally as you're leveling up through the game you get to pick perks and and so you have like the bit of your loadout that you start out with your character sheet for the respective characters and then like the relic things and then as you level you choose like a randomized perk that's specific to the character that helps to build your overall skill set and and synergizes with your loadout and the fact that there's randomization in there i don't really have a problem with it makes the runs not be quite as samey as they would it requires you to sort of improvise and figure out how you're doing and then you have to factor in the tomes of power which also give you bonuses and then the runes also build on top of all of these little synergies so i think it was like the first difficulty is really where things got to be like the sweet spot for difficulty for me because that's where you got to have the most variance and just having fun building and figuring things out because everything past that first difficulty is just getting kicked in the dick harder which i'm fine with i beat the final difficulty of this game i put the time in you're a real trooper <sighs> Definitely put in more time than I could justify doing with the game. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm also going to say this, by the way, like the the I think it's peer to peer for the servers or something, because like I was playing with someone for that final difficulty and the game starts to chug and I like disconnected a few times 
in some of the later levels. Like, I have good internet. My ping like jumped into the 400s and 500s a few times. I think the person I was playing with was from France. Um, yeah, I mean, when we're talking about like little mechanical problems, right? Um, when we're talking about what you can do to improve a game like this to make it a little bit better, uh, it's not any of that, right? Like the runes and stuff, they're all fine. All of that's fine. It's things like, personally, I found the visibility to be nearly zero, right? I had to tunnel vision and focus uh, to, to kind of see what's going on around my character versus some of these games that do have a little bit more of a uh, cohesive style and a cohesive graphical approach to their enemies and things like that where things are visible at all times and you kind of know what you're doing and you don't you don't have to just focus on where your character actually is oh and right I, feel like... I i need to add on to that if you don't mind me interjecting the mini map sucks it does <laughs> it sucks so much and it complicates trying to find where your teammates are and where anything is and if you've been somewhere before because while you can sort of count on bloodstains to figure that out they eventually fade away so you definitely get issues of like running in circles trying to find somewhere you've been or like a treasure yes. chest you haven't opened and that is all made a lot worse by the constant enemy spawns that come from behind you it would be i think pretty beneficial if you could have some sort of either safe area or um enemies only spawned in front of you or they moved through a path from designated areas some way to tell you where you needed to go i can understand why you might want confusion in certain levels but you shouldn't be confused all the time i mean i felt the game did sometimes give you breathing room where it's just trickling nonsense at you but like yeah there's definitely times where it's just a stream of nonsense yeah, i don't know if i'd call that breathing room just all the constant enemies and that constant freaking chip damage was really annoying. It really just falls back on that Left 4 Dead formula where you have the one safe room every now and then and everything else is, you're gonna die. <laughs> yeah, which, I mean, I was actually gonna note this. One of the things that I sort of had like a weird thing with is as you scale up in the difficulties, you get less breathing room. And you guys were already like, we don't have much breathing room to start with. And the game's just like, Ha. Ha. Those fucking patrols of, like, the, the dread guards, the things you're, like, sort of supposed to avoid, though you can fight them, they start sending them at you in, like, swarms of 20, and where you, like, alert one, everyone in the stage or in the respective area gets triggered and comes at you. It's the most annoying cancer I can think of. I did actually not mind um, the one difficulty mile. Like, we've talked about visibility and... Since the, the map's useless anyways, basically. Um, one of the later difficulty modifiers actually does disable you being able to tell where your teammate is at all. You don't even get a marker, which makes communication and like tight teamwork a lot more important. And I thought that was interesting as a difficulty mode modifier. Like that's the only difference that hitting that specific level makes. Yeah, no, it's mechanically an interesting experience with a lot of tedium sort of built in, in in getting to that satisfying experience. Which is how you pitched it to me, actually. You, you mentioned that this is a game that you think is mechanically very sound and has some interesting things and does some interesting things and, you know, it, it could be very cool, but is flawed. And after yep. having experienced it, I would say that it is quite flawed, but it is perhaps fixable. Uh, I think that if this game were to get a decent upgrade in terms of core mechanics and some of the visibility issues, uh, some user friendliness issues, some new uh, new player you know, uh, benefits and things like that. I think that in that case, you would be having a, a game that is quite enjoyable to play um, on the same kind of level as like a Torchlight or, or you know, uh, a Left Diablo, something like that, or Left 4 Dead, where you can just hop in and play for a bit. I think that roguelike is maybe very good for something like this because, you know, in today's world where we have, you know, Fortnite and things like that, um, people are, are pretty comfortable with the idea of just going out there, getting what you can, and trying to get as far as you can. But that being said, I did come away from the game with an overall 
negative opinion. Uh, I believe almost exclusively due to what seems to be poor implementation of some key mechanics that negatively impact the gameplay so much that it would be very hard for me to recommend it. My stance wasn't quite as negative, but it definitely would not recommend buying it. It's kind of a dead game and it learned from its inspiration a little bit, but it didn't learn the kind of key things that make those things addicting. There is no loot aspect that normally appeals to the Diablo fans. There's no just jump in for 15 minutes with your friends, kind of like Left 4 Dead can do by choosing your level. There's none of that kind of stuff. It's literally just, here's the beginning, go as far as you can, grind out the stuff, and that's the only motivation you really have. Yeah, which, I mean, like some of it was like also the stage variants. Like there is some degree of um, variation within the stages, but you're going to be seeing very similar events from stage to stage. Um, there'll be like, what, the church holdout segment where you find the shit to um, fix the church up and then bide time until he lets you through. And I actually got two of those events in the same game once, which was a little weird. <laughs> I was in that game with you. Yeah, uh, there's one where you have to like load a cannon and fire it through a wall, which is connected to the church sequence if you realize it, because it's you don't even have to have those in the same game, which is a little weird, but it's you fire a cannon and the cannonball ends up lodged in this church and other things. Um, and then there's the escape sequences. Those are sort of like the, the and the holdouts. And those are the main variation you'll see in capstone segments that are in the various stages i think that's probably pretty accurate so it could use like a little more in far as variation in stage design and little events there's already things hidden like the first stage has um a chance to meet this shark that just fucking eats a rune of power so you have to like beat up this this reanimated shark that's just hanging on a thing while like zombies swarm at you and you get like a reward from it. And I thought that was cute. You have like the fountain rooms that have like the bajillion chests there and you have a randomly powered up version of an elite boss. And that's sort of I think it for like the hidden along the room along the way little events and then otherwise it's just traps everywhere and treasure chests that you're cycling through so you it, it could use more i think events and little opportunities to tell the story to actually like tell the story a little bit and to make the runs stand apart other than checking dead ends for chests and tomes I, I mean, it's just you're going through the same fucking four areas every time. I was sort of wishing that you had, like, area variety that you could get through. Like, just, like, a different route you could take. Because you're always coming across the exact same fucking boss. And the experience is very, very much the same, except that in higher difficulties, he just spawns more garbage during the fight. That is basically it. He has more health, which... It's not a bad boss fight, per se. The idea of he fights you, he occasionally pauses certain stages to put down a few fucking um, totems they have to break so you can keep whittling down his life, and while he does it, he summons elites. That's okay. That's fine. But it's really fucking tedious when you get into the higher difficulties because there's just enemies everywhere. Wall-to-wall, -wall, like, elites everywhere. And he's just not giving you breathing room to actually whittle him down because he's just like, oh, you broke my totems? Have more garbage, I'm running across the screen and I'm summoning more totems again. I think it's telling from all of this, by the way, that you were the only one who mentioned story uh, elements at all. And uh, you definitely spent the most time with it and you're also the type of person who will go looking for those type of things. So it is definitely not there. No, it, it's like I, I like I was being generous in saying what I could find. They are tiny little lore nuggets at best, and most of them boil down to just sort of punchlines. Uh, my biggest takeaway is that I thought it was boring. I felt like there was nothing really pushing me forward, and the waves of enemies just constantly coming at me just made the whole game a slog, really. I, I just felt there's really no reward to be playing it, to be honest. That, that's also why I didn't drag you guys to the survival mode. The survival mode is, I think, the biggest weakness of the game because it's just like a slightly large room. Um, 
you could like probably walk from one end to the other room in like 15 20 seconds like that about big maybe a little smaller um and yeah you're just sitting there holding off waves of enemies and you fight the baron like once at level five and once at level 10 and that's all there is to it and i thought that was miserable as an experience which is why i put you guys specifically in like the main game because it at mm. least has something to offer <laughs> mm. there were some issues with some of the enemies that made it feel even more sloggy because they were kind of bullet spongy which for this type of game you want things to if they're going to be spawning quickly you want them to drop quickly you want that kind of power fantasy aspect going into it even if it's supposed to be a survival game and this just doesn't do that i mean some of it i think is the modifiers that the game can randomly slog you with like there's one that makes all the enemies more durable and then another one that can be randomly generated that makes them regenerated which is just sort of cancerous together because it makes like the normal enemies very much just bullet sponges unless you're like super optimized as a build which is partly our jesus to get to so yeah no that's definitely i i think very much like a valid concern especially as you start ramping up higher difficulties i think i partly just have like the weird i've put so much time in this game i don't want to hate it sunk cost fallacy <laughs> <laughs> possibly like i sort of enjoyed playing it but i think i partly enjoyed playing it with you guys because i got to hang out with friends and got to see everything it could bring which made it like a little more forgivable for a bit and then i was like okay but now what that's kind of a flaw that happens with a lot of multiplayer games they forget to design the game because they're relying on that it's better with friends aspect you see it with mmos you see it with a bunch of first person shooters if you don't have friends in it you're just not gonna play it yeah and that's solved by good game design rather than just throwing more crap in there mm -hmm. yeah um so yeah i mean i mean that's about it i i guess the only thing i will say is i liked the character design like they've played different enough that there's something there for everyone yeah the artwork was fine the graphical aspect of it looked good it's just unlocking the skins didn't keep up. annoying <laughs> <laughs> unlocking skins is fucking tedious get get 50 chickens over it's like more grind it's just a lot more grind because it's like you know do you want to play like five to seven like full one hour one hour and a half runs to unlock it's, a purely aesthetic skin that it's games as a service design leaking over into indie stuff and it's a bad thing <laughs> i would recommend that indie developers do not look at triple a's as a goalpost for that kind of stuff i mean the the other weird part was like so some of those like character designs were like had a little more effort put into them whereas others were like very clearly just palette swaps i think they would have been a little bit better if they would have been tied to challenges rather than tying it to here's a currency you can gather while playing and build up enough of it Rather it be like, oh, you unlock the first aid thing by doing X amount of healing in a run. You unlock this one by doing this X amount of damage. There's Something actually like the challenges that you can do that do things like um, make you really slow, but like remove the cooldown pretty much from your movement abilities and tying them to doing that as a character would have been fine. Yeah, you have those be things that you can unlock cosmetics with rather than just arbitrary challenges for more currency yeah go fight chickens while you're being swarmed by garbage and, and not just a little chickens like a lot of chickens for every single almost just palette swap <laughs> uh yeah overall though like i don't have much to say on the game on like an aesthetic thing I, again the we've sort of touched on the visuals they're overall fine the unlocking outfits is sort of tedious and annoying and the music's all right there's like some tracks i thought were better than others but like so much of it's just overshadowed by constant like hit sounds from enemies <sighs> that's from having all the enemies yeah no and that's just sort of the thing is you just have like this tedious wave of like enemy sound effects from them trying to murder you but turning it down is a bad idea because it at least gives you a warning when something's throwing something at you from like around the corner i, I guess we should probably wind this down though <laughs> so conclusion time hey 
Pop, why don't you lead us in the wonderful conclusion of this episode? My conclusion is that the game is bad and you should definitely not buy it. <laughs> I mean, that is blunt and to the point, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Fair I'm, enough. <laughs> it's a slog to get through unless you really like pretty much, you know, games where you just have to grind and just chug your way through it. And have friends. And have friends. That is the, probably the most important part. Because mm -hmm. yeah, I did I sort of it really kind of comes down to that same sort of thing, right? Like, there are too many issues to recommend the game and not enough to, uh, to pull you back in. It's not a game that I think I would ever play again. It's not a game that I would recommend to anybody to try. I don't know. If they were to do a pretty drastic improvement on this game, in all of the kind of little things that we've mentioned, because I don't think any of the, the problems in this game are insurmountable, and I don't think that they are individually a death knell for the title. What I do think is that there's just too many of them, and they all kind of suck. Uh, yeah, they just keep adding up to just worsen the experience. Which, yeah. I mean, so I've done my time in this game, and I'm using that, that colloquial, I think, pretty aptly here. And I, I'm pretty forgiving, I think, but I don't disagree fundamentally. This is only really a game I could recommend if the game went on a substantial sale and if you had a full group of friends to go in it. Because it really, like even when you're playing with a few people, it doesn't really shine as much as when you have a full group to just sort of embrace the intrinsic stupidity that, that comes up there. I'd say that's a pretty fair assertion. It's just a little tedious to get started. Like, you do need that little start to really start to, to make progress and for it to start feeling good and for people to get used to rules so it's just not like this very... Like, our first couple runs together were just bad feeling until we got everyone to speed and I think that's just sort of it like I've put so much time into this game and so many different iterations of the updates and the, the latest update which I think might be the final one they have planned unless this video changes something because I think they mentioned they're not working on developing it currently but hey maybe this will give them a kick in the shin there's a, a, a fundamental like a foundation there for something good but it's not followed through with yet which is why i'm really hesitant to say more than like i think it's sort of a fumble there's good elements but they're overshadowed a lot and then in the state of the game itself it's why i'm just like I, if you are absolutely dying for something that would give you i guess like similar feelings to um i don't know if anyone else played this but dead island epidemic the like muba ish dead island game that was out for a little while it's maybe the closest thing you'll get now that I can think of, but that's a pretty, that's a pretty sad, <laughs> that's, that's like a, ah, that is a very depressing qualifier. I can't say I absolutely would not recommend it, but it is definitely a game I would have trouble recommending. It's, you definitely have to have want, some, want something that you want to just grind through kind of mindlessly to really get any joy from it solo or have some friends into it. So for most people, no, but if all you're going to do is play a game and listen to a podcast, it might work for that. But even then you're better off going with something like Diablo or Path of Exile or something with a lot more staying power. And snagging it on a sale. <laughs> it's one of those things where I can find better things to recommend, but if someone has played all those things, I can recommend it then. <laughs> situation. <laughs> like here's a, list of 95 games you should play first and then if you still need something else here you go yeah, it, it kills time maybe yeah, friendships just, when you have a comparison like path of exile right how how can you uh it does everything in this game better. outside of a proper survival mode yeah it does pretty much everything better in that i mean heck diablo 2 does everything better <laughs> and that's a 20 something year old game which is interesting because like there was someone I was talking to and they mentioned that this game originally was intended to be something closer to like Diablo. It wasn't intended to be like a sort of rogue lighty experience, but somewhere along the time of its development, they like changed what it was going to be. And 
I imagine like a bunch of story hit the cutting room floor. And, one, like, one thing I didn't check is what publisher are they under? Shiro Games. Because um, it that gives me that happening generally gives me a series of vibes of the business team got involved or stakeholders got involved and said we need these keywords in the game they need to sell on this because this is what is trending right now do it or alternatively there is big trends happening right now and they're like we don't want to get overshadowed by this change yeah because it came out during the survival game and the um I'm trying to remember the roguelite kind of big waves that were going through and everybody was using those terms because that's what was making profit. I also like fired. I had like this fucking glitch that kept hitting me and it took so much fucking joy out of my runs, except for Hop, who was like, man, I'm so happy to see you eat shit, Arlie. Where <laughs> <laughs> the little bastard. Um, I uh, would not level. I mentioned that other that other bug he kept having where he couldn't level up or something? No, no, no. That was the bug I was about to talk about. Was there another bug? Ah, no, no. That was the one. Yeah, no. I know you are going to go into that. No, there, there was the fucking bug where I would, like, level, but I wouldn't get to be able to choose a perk. So I would just stop gaining any build variants or any real escalation of what my character did. And it would usually hit me at, like, level two or three. So everyone else is getting, like, seven levels worth of, w worth of that good shit. And then I'm getting seven levels of, like absolutely fucking nothing and staying at the exact same strength I was at at like the earlier level minus a little bit of damage increase which was the most insulting bullshit ever welcome to my TED talk I guess please fix that bug Shiro games so anyways folks first off I'd like to say thanks for tuning in and sticking with us for this first sort of experimental episode of roundtable review if you enjoyed this feel free to leave a comment I'll possibly get more of these done and, and we'll see more of Moriarty, Hop, Alzarath, and other people provided they forgive me for making them play Darkspark. Um, and you know, if you just agree, disagree, or have something to say, comment. It's great. You can also just, wait, can they even thumbs down me anymore? <laughs> They can. It just okay. won't go up on the front end. Yeah. Yeah, no, if you absolutely hate my, my taste and opinion, feel free to thumbs down me or, you know, agree. But nobody else will know. No one else will know. I'll know. <laughs> You'll be able to hurt my feelings. Oh, and if you folks enjoy my efforts to create new indie reviews, interviews, and gaming content, you can hit the subscribe button and the bell so you know there's a new release. For the Discord savvy folk, click the video description to find the link to my community, the Crit Hit Cauldron, and also my sad Patreon, where one day there will be cat pictures, because that's, that's the only thing I can think to offer the world, is photos of my sweet, endearing fumble. Um, lastly, if you want to see me get dunked on in indie games, such as Darksburg and other things, you can check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash Arlian. There's also, in the description, going to be a link to Alzrath's channel, Hop's Twitch, and Moriarty's channel and Twitch, unless he doesn't want me to put his thing. It's a very cool place. You should check out that very cool place. That said, I'll catch you folks on the next episode of Crit Hit. Take care till then, folks.